Review of A Theory of Justice. 正义论 by John Rawls. 约翰罗尔斯 First published 1972, Chapter One: Justice as Fairness. 第一章正义及公平 Section Three: The Main Idea of the Theory of Justice. 第三节正义理论的主要思想 Rawls is very clear that his purpose in developing and promoting a theory of justice is to raise a theory of social contract. 社会契约论 to a high level of abstraction in order to carry on the work of philosophers such as Locke, Locke, Rousseau, Rousseau, and Kant. Kant. Rawls shies away from particularities and chooses instead to work within the world of the general and abstract. He holds firmly to a standard philosophical course of positing and seeking out the original agreement or contract. 原始协议 This is where Rawls introduces his primary presumption or guiding ideology. 指导思想 about human behavior. That is, if you at all care about freedom and rationality. 自由而有理性 Principles which set the basic conditions for equality within the group. Then you will adopt the following pivotal idea: Human groups fundamentally function in order to benefit all members equally, abiding by a generally well accepted view of fairness. 及公平观 This is a very large theoretical pill Rawls is asking us all to swallow. It will be interesting to see what type of sweetener he employs to help make it go down. Rawls continually refers to man being and living in a primitive state, 原始状态 and of course, in such an original state, human beings are highly likely to make rational choices. What follows then is for Rawls simply an understandable flow-on effect. Once such a concept of justice is adopted and accepted, then, in Rawls' view, both the constitution, 宪法 and legislature. Of the social state in question should engender the self-same principles of justice and fairness. This almost miraculous contingent relationship then will give rise to what Rawls refers to as a just, 正义的 and fair state. Rawls is adamant: men are able to decide in advance how they are to regulate their claims against one another, and what it is which constitutes the foundation charter of their society. He argues that just as each person must decide by rational reflection what it means to be good, in the same way a group of persons must decide once and for all what is to count amongst them as being just and unjust. Rawls believes that the choice which rational men would make in such a hypothetical situation of equal liberty ultimately determines the principles of justice. Rawls acknowledges that such a construct is not in fact an historical state of affairs. But is rather a hypothetical situation, which leads to a particular conception of justice. One of the essential features of this so-called situation is that from the outset, no one knows what their place is in society, nor their class position or social status. Nor does anyone know their fortune in the distribution of natural assets and abilities, their intelligence, strength, and the like. At this point, I am not at all sure what Rawls hopes to achieve by utilizing such an idealized, abstract, hypothetical thought bubble. The principles of justice are somehow chosen behind an all-encompassing veil of ignorance. In this way, Rawls argues there is a benefit to be had. In that, no one is either advantaged or disadvantaged in the choice of principles by the outcome of natural chance or the contingencies of social circumstances. Therefore, since all are similarly situated and no one is able to design principles to favor their particular condition, the principles of justice must therefore be the result, the outcome of a fair agreement. Rawls concedes, however, that no society can simply prove to be a scheme of cooperation. One into which human beings enter willingly, voluntarily, 自愿参加 in a literal sense, where each person finds themselves placed at birth in a particular position, in a particular society, and position materially affects their real life prospects. Despite the nature of disparities in the life chances of social members, it is Rawls' view that any society satisfying the principles of justice as fairness comes close to being a voluntary scheme of commitment. Because it involves the principles of freedom and equality, which people would and do assent to, Rawls maintains that because of this phenomenon, at the very least, members of society are indeed autonomous, and the obligations they recognize and commit to are, when all is said and done, self-imposed. It is here that Rawls chooses to address the issue of utility or utilitarianism. 功利主义 He maintains that it hardly seems likely that persons who view themselves as equals 
entitled to press their claims upon one another, would agree to a principle which may require lesser life prospects for some simply for the sake of a greatest sum of advantages to be enjoyed by others. Because of this, Rawls sees that in fact, 1. A principle of utility is incompatible with 2. The conception of social cooperation among equals for mutual advantage. Rawls concludes that there would be no injustice in benefiting the few, if the situation of persons not so fortunate is, somehow, thereby improved. The core idea appears to be that since everyone's well-being depends upon a scheme of cooperation, without which no one could have a satisfactory life, then the division of advantages should be such as to draw for the willing cooperation of everyone participating. This scheme of things depends entirely on whether or not reasonable terms are being proposed and are in fact adopted. Rawls is forthright in claiming that he does not expect the terms he proposes to convince everyone. Justice as fairness, 正义及公平, is what Rawls describes as a contract theory. He argues that the merit of contract terminology is that it inherently conveys the idea that principles of justice may be conceived as principles that would be chosen by rational persons and are imbued with natural integrity. This means that principles of justice may indeed have a legitimate role to play in dealing with conflicting claims likely to arise from the multitude of advantages and also disadvantages of systems of social cooperation. Rawls declares that it is characteristic of contract theories that they stress the public nature of political principles. He does concede, however, that justice as fairness is not a complete contract theory in itself. This is because contractarian ideas can be utilized to embrace an entire ethical system, a system that includes a wide range of virtues, not only those virtues relating specifically to justice. Regardless, Rawls is intent upon setting off on his theory of justice odyssey confident in his belief that a widely almost ubiquitous intellectual understanding of fairness will sufficiently light the way to enable decision-making processes which readily facilitate the resolution of human conflict. I will follow Rawls' train of thought as best I can and as far as it goes, but I'm already concerned about the integrity and strength of his theoretical framework, its capacity to explain the true nature, and withstand the rigors of real-life experience.